Welcome to Carpet Cliff Notes, the supplementary podcast from Morelia Python Radio. The goal is to share with you all things Carpet Python. We hope that these bite-sized episodes will help with some of the misconceptions that are sometimes associated with these snakes and share with you everything you will need to know to be successful with these animals. Let's get started. All right, welcome to episode six of Carpet Cliff Notes, and we are talking about HCQ carpet pythons, otherwise known as, well, well, and what does HCQ stand for? High contrast Queensland carpet. It's, <laughs> which, which means, means <laughs> which means is that the, that was what was printed on the box. <laughs> it's like, yes. Yeah. I mean, if you want to get down into it, high contrast Queensland was what was printed on the box that was shipped over in a shipment of carpet pythons to, I believe it was Dave Prada. Correct. And Komodo yeah. reptiles. So, and that's all it said. It was high contrast to Queensland because it was a shipment that originated from Queensland, Australia, uh, and it had these black and yellow snakes in there. But they were, I think, significantly larger than, say, a jungle carpet. So, and also Queensland being a natural integrate zone, nobody really knew what they were if they were jungles or carpets or coastals there. Yeah, they sort of have like a, uh, I would say they, they're not really necessarily yellow like what you think of a jungle carpet, yeah. but more of a khaki, at, at, um, what is gold. It? Dirt, uh, was it jag yellow? Like they have a lot of, like they have, yes. like they have the coastal version of yellow. It's the, if these are jungles, they're not the most impressive jungles, but probably closer to the natural ones. But again, it's a natural integrate zone. So there could be, Coastals, there could be jungles, there could be coastal jungles. So, yeah, yeah, I think um, you know, you know, when I when I look at a HCQ, um, we're, for the sake of argument, we're going to call them coastal star in this, uh, during this <laughs> right. uh, podcast. That, but that was the ge- what, general rule for a bit because they were larger than what people would consider the maximum size for a jungle. Of mm-hmm. course, now we know that jungles can get just as big as coastals and, right. you know, whether that's healthy or not. But, uh, yeah, so. Yeah, it's hard to t- So, yeah, to me, this looks similar to what I saw in Brisbane. Yes. Now, um, as far as, you know, there's all we know is from Queensland. So mm-hmm. like like you said, it could be anything. It could be a mix. It could be a coastal. It could be a coastal. It could be, it could be a jungle. And you know what? Just because it came from Queensland doesn't mean that's where the animals were collected. That just means that's where they the box came from. Yeah. For all you know, yeah. they were collected so, somewhere near Gelatin or God knows where. I think this is probably similar to what we saw with um um Derek Roddy's uh, Atherton carpets. So when those carpets came in, they were labeled on the box as Atherton mm-hmm. carpet pythons. Now, whether they're actually locality, I don't think that the carpet community has accepted that they were. Mm-hmm. Um, but who, you know, I maybe because there's no proof. But you know, according to Derek's records, it goes all the way back, and you can. He actually, I think he might even have the um, uh, the actual picture. If I'm not mistaken, of the box, um, of the box <laughs> with it saying African uh, carpets, but but we'll leave that for another episode. Yeah, please God, let's um, not dull. Let's. Oh my God. <laughs> so I think in the early days, you know, there was a lot of um, a lot of back and forth with purity, mm-hmm. and uh, I think this is why this line sort of got lost, uh, or nobody really kind of cared about it. it. Seems like at the time there was. Uh, a few people, including yourself, that were kind of working with this line. Right. Um, and, um, you know, they really made nice carpet pythons as far as I'm they concerned. They do. You know? And the problem is is that, once again, it's a carpet line that got devoured by a morph project. Um, yep. Hycon was devoured by Tiger because yes. people wanted... You know, on one side of the coin, you saw Jaguar, and that's really cool. And then you have... These guys. So the best way to infuse your tiger project with a shitload of color 
was to breed it to a high con. And right. and high cons, I mean, they they did not have the stripes. They they looked just like a normal carpet, a um, lot of saddles, stuff like that. Um, so, but it, it didn't take long for the stripes to overtake and have good color. So, a lot of those bright yellow tigers that we all assume that people kind of connect with as natural tigers is is high con blood because. If you look back far enough, the original tigers are like bone white. Like they're like creamy yeah. color. So mm-hmm. you start seeing them become yellow and yellow and yellow because high con is being mixed in there. Yeah, I know Anthony Caponetto and Dave Prada were big on trying yes. to make high contrast uh, tigers and, you know, they barred um, the animal. The, the interesting thing I find about the, especially the animal that um, Anthony Caponetto was working with, is it's very uh, you can see the citrus tiger stuff mm-hmm. um, like the for instance the um, the really lightly colored khaki portals and then they're outlined in black and then outlined in that with more of a, a gray lavender type of color right. almost and then then on the on the you know on the top or on the dorsal part of the snake. You know, it's like a broken up stripe. So you can see like, um, you know, that I think while it, why it went so well with tigers is because I think there's probably uh, a lot of polygenics for striping in the HCQ line. With striping and color and the contrast, because, um, yeah. I mean, there, in my opinion, there are two types of high cons. There's the ones that are just straight up yellow and black. There's nothing in the dorsals, just black. And yep. then there are the ones that have colors. If you look at it, it's like uh, my original pair from Prada were just mm-hmm. straight up yellow and blacks. But then I got a female down the road from Mo, which was Carmen, who was originally owned by Will Bird, who is mm-hmm. plugged into a lot of the citrus tiger stuff. So that's yep. where a lot of the color builds on with the citrus tiger. So you kind of see almost, I almost want to say that the infusion of color comes from coastal mixing. So here comes the high cons, and they're basically just contrast black, yellow. As they start breeding the coastals, you start getting more color, and that just kind of pops it and explodes it. And then you start seeing that get organized into stripes, and that's where citrus tigers start coming out there. So it's really weird of what it can do, but you almost see where it got lost because who wants a black and yellow coastal when you can get a black and yellow jungle? <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Yeah, and I think probably the other part of that is back at this time, mm-hmm. you know, coastals had the reputation of being huge, yes. and jungles had the reputation of being small, you know, on the smaller small. side. So, yeah. so more people wanted to work with the yellow and black in um, in the jungle mm-hmm. rather than worrying about the you know, and then also a huge the size of the coastal. A huge part of his Prada stopped breeding. Yeah. So yeah. Dave sold his original animals. He stopped breeding. Um, Caponetto stop breeding. Um, I think Will Bird mixed all and, his stuff with tigers. Yeah, I don't know if he actually ever had. Uh, for, I could be wrong on this. I'm, I'm not a hundred percent, but my interpretation of of Will Bird's HCQ stuff is that he got ACQ tigers from Caponetto. Yeah. And really, that was the project, and that's where they were taking it. And it just so happened that Will had stumbled upon this other animal that, um, you know, he bred that founded the Citrus Tiger line. But really, it's all, I think the project originally began as just making, you know, Tigers. striped carpets that, you know, yeah. were had nice contrast. That was Yeah, that was it. I mean, Prada had maybe 2.2 adults that he kept and bred, uh-huh. and he was the one who would breed the base HCQ. And then when he stopped, um, I know Chris had at 1.4.4 direct from Prada. Um, mm-hmm. And that's where my uh, pair, my original pair came from was him. So mm-hmm. uh, after that, after that, everybody had just crossed it into Tigers and then that was it. Nobody was working with it past that point. Um, I got my first clutch from those original Prada animals in 2000. <sighs> It was 12, maybe 13. I can't remember. Yeah. I really can't. When do we start the, when do we start the show? 11? 2011. Damn yeah. it. So it was 2010 so, then because I remember because you inquired about it. 
Yes. Yeah. So it was 2010. <laughs> yeah. Shit. So, uh, yeah, I got 10 years. I know. Ago. Right. Wow. So then I got that original pairing and I kept two females back and mm-hmm. ended up selling one female, uh, and then held on to my other one. But then my original female died and then I had my original male, but he was a monster. He was huge. So mm-hmm. trying to get the female that I was raising up up to a size that I think she could breed with him was never going to happen. Like, and then uh-huh. he died, and then I was stuck with this pure HCQ female and no male. So I bred her to my red tiger, the jack, my red jack. Okay. Yep. Um, now you have a what? Um, do you have? A, well, currently she you have a male? she laid eggs, and um, that was the clutch that I forgot to plug in the incubator for. So. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah. So that, that clutch did great. Um, took me forever. So I have a pair from that clutch. And the female looks straight up normal, high contrast queens, and she's black and yellow. And then mm-hmm. the male I have is actually a jag, and he's got some cool pattern, and, but he doesn't have any, like, citrusy color or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, I was contacted by somebody who purchased – one of the male, one of my pure HCQ males from Carpet Fest, an auction. Okay. And he said if I wanted to have him back. So he and I traded this last Carpet Fest for him. So now I have a pure 2010 male. And then I have these 50 percenters. So, man, if I only would have kept my, uh, <laughs> I, the fe- I did get a female from you, you but did. I ended, yeah. she actually ended up dying. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it was it, weird. She got a weird infection in her mouth. It, and just it of... sucks because if you sit there, because I mean, like at one point I had, I had two breedable girls that, yeah. And now I'm down to like one that I'm raising up and it's like shit. Um, uh, but I do have a friend who has a HCQ tiger direct from Will Bird. Okay. So, um, so it's not that far removed. Not that from, far removed. Uh, it's really the best you could possibly get. So it's basically baseline HCQ cross with a tiger, and that's it. And I think they maybe they, they didn't really go too far out, so it's still sticking in it, and it's better than what I did with the Jag. So um, I'm going to take the Pure and mix him to the uh, HCQ Tiger so that hopefully we can at least get something. Back in the realm of possibility of, but the, but you like you like we said before, the line's gone. <laughs> like you can't yeah. you can't unmuddy the water at this point. So uh, right. we're just trying to get back to the close as we can get because it was going to take me a couple of years to try to get to like eighty eight percent HCQ. So, in my opinion, the, the these the, these lines from like um, you know two thousand seven, let's say to like say two thousand twelve. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, they're probably there. Let's say the two thousands. Right. right. These lines. You know, at the time, um, you know, a lot of people were trying to breed whatever they could to Jags. Yep. So, um, and then you had that one camp, and then you had this other camp where, you know, everybody was trying to be as pure as they possibly could. And, you know, wanted lineage back to, you know, Lemke animals or whatever, um, or locality. Um, I thought that was like a... It's a train. (laughs) (laughs) This is why we don't record at noon. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) No worries. We can edit that. Please. Anyway. It's going to keep going because it's going to give it it another second. Okay. All right. You should be good. (laughs) Okay. I think uh, think the... the, uh, And again, this is just my opinion, but I think the... um, What had happened is, you know, in the 2000s that, you know, people were trying to produce Jags Mm -hmm. and they were trying to make pure Jags that were, you know, uh, uh, nicer looking, if you will. From Um, everybody else's Jags, yeah. Sure, Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, they wanted to try to uh, make it as yellow as they possibly could, reduce the pattern as much as they could, um, which is weird because you would think that people would want to breed something like this to to a Jag because you would think that that would increase the chances of that happening. I did, actually. Yeah, Yeah. right? I mean, you did. (laughs) Yes, I did. And how did the Jags turn out? Gorgeous. I mean, they were bright fucking yellow, but the problem is is that – and – the problem is, is that, dude, it's like if you look back at some of those Jags that were produced in the early 2000s, I mean, what is it? Uh, Benjamin met a blueberry clutch. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. I had one. Howard had one. 
a bunch of people had one. None of them are around today. No. They all hit four yeah. or five years old, bred twice, and died. Yeah. And it's and half of that is, you know, our own stupidity of how we kept them at that point. How it was supposed to be kept, how we were told to keep them. And it's you know, yeah. It's one of those things. But I had gorgeous Jaguars. They were bright yellow. Um yeah. and I held on to one. She ended up passing a cancer, but it's you know, it was one of those things where they were really good. It was a really cool thing. If you wanted to infuse color, and HCQ was perfect for that stuff. Yeah, and then you had um, you had people on the other side of the camp that you know they were more or less um, um, what would the word be? They were uh, they were they were more like I said purist type of thing, and and to them this line was um, was not something that they wanted to mess yeah. with because it was questionable, and, and you know, and that's understandable. It, it you know, is if, you, if you're working with pure bloodlines, you don't you don't want to mix it. But up. that's the problem um, I have is is that the people who were going to mix it with morphs did, so the line got lost there because you're just eventually going to call it a tiger, and then the people who wanted to be purists never touched the thing, so right there was no inkling to keep it going. Um, I mean, I even fell into that trap because yeah. I was at that time being very purist and stuff like that and not realizing and space was not available and yada, 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 where it's like, if I could redo it, I, I'd force myself to keep them because that's it. The, uh, after, after these animals go, there's no pure that we know of right. anywhere. Right. And dude, I, I don't know how many times I sold an HCQ and then I saw it further down the road being sold as a jungle. Yeah, that was the other tro- trouble, you know. I mean, that's the great debate. You sell these things and you're representing them as best you can, and then somebody sort of, you know, takes it and changes it and yeah. makes it uh, what they want. Right, and that's, and that's right there is why if you really care about the animal you're getting, go direct to the breeder because the people who have it might not even know that it's yeah. not pure. So it it's one of those things where, you know um, – it's 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 again it's one of those things where there should hopefully have been room enough to keep this stuff so if somebody wanted to play with it they could have but yeah i even look at it as just like um you know one of one of the reasons why i um you know have, have sort of tried to keep these lines going or at least talk about them so that people understand mm-hmm. it is that you know um we don't really have a huge gene pool when it comes to carpet pythons <laughs> when you're talking about anything that's in Australia. Yeah. Um, and unless they plan on opening the doors anytime soon, which I don't necessarily see happening, um, you know, that you, you, you run into the, you, you eventually are going to run into a situation where you're crossing siblings or you're crossing, mm-hmm. you know, you have no, um, no fresh blood. Uh, no, no, no fresh blood that's going on. Yeah. You know, I think that um, you know, with coastal carpets, um, uh, this is a little off the HCQ thing, but you know, with coastal carpets, you have all you have. What there's what four different localities at this point. So, and Rockhampton, Port, Port Douglas, Douglas, Cape, Cape York. So yeah, four. Yeah, I, guess I mean, the right. problem so is, have... is that if you want to keep say say I popped out something that's a morph, mm-hmm. you know. How do you test it? Well, you got to breed it to make sure, to figure out the genetics of it. Okay. If it's a coastal, I'm going to want to breed it to pure coastal, right? Yep. So mm-hmm. you're going to want to try to breed it to a Rockhampton or a Port Douglas or a Brisbane or something like that. Sure. And if you look at a lot of the old, um, you know, you don't see Brisbane a lot because I think because you know, that line was sort of almost lost. Yeah. You know, Nick Mutton uh, really kind of. Uh, went to try to I remember when he was working on getting that um locality back. My female just going. shed. This is so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they, they sort of um you know you know that well that's but no you're right. Because if you look back at it I want to say like what Jag at one point crossed with a rock Campton before it came yeah, here. I think uh, it's like okay. Yeah if you look at a lot of like Paul's or, or actually, if you look at Nick's stuff, but it's actually Paul's breedings. Um, a lot of that uh, will will show you that uh, there was a lot of that sort of cross. I think Rockhampton was probably the one that was crossed with the most. Yeah. I think the reason, uh, probably, I think why Brisbane maybe have been off the table, not uh, um, 
not only because of the availability of them at the time, but um, because they produce red babies. Exactly. That's what I was so going to say. Sort of, the color. Yeah. You, yeah. If you're if you're trying to prove out a caramel or something like that, it's going <laughs> to. I mean, it's going to make it very difficult uh, to on, uh, on the scale of figure that out. Coastals, Rockhamptons are probably the ones that are the the middlest of the road. So you want to go yeah. with them, and that's not a knock against them or anything like that. But they'll be the ones that you can see what happens, and a lot of morphs or morphs in the early 2000s nobody ever did that work so what yeah. they would do is they would just get pairs of something and call mm-hmm. them something and then breed them to each other and never take it further out which means there's no proof which means it fizzles which means it dies and then the line's right. gone what i find hilarious is that like last year a bunch of importers were like hcq this and i'm like oh really <laughs> it's like <laughs> sometimes man <laughs> People want to try to dress up their stuff to sell it and they'll cling on to anything that sounds flashy, you know, and we've discussed Mm -hmm. this before. Talon was a red hypo Jaguar when I bought him. Mm -hmm. Right. Neither red nor hypo. (laughs) Like it's like not at all. So barely even Jaguar. So it's like, (laughs) and, and that's just, something to do. So you got to watch for this stuff. And this is why I like the carpet clip notes because it kind of gives people an education before they go buy something, flash it around and realize that it's not really what they just paid for. Yeah. I don't think that, um, yeah, I think you're right. And I don't think that, um, HCQ is misleading, No, but, um, and because it is high contrast yes. and they are Queensland. from Queensland, but, <laughs> so, but at one point, do you, what point do you originally call Like in my opinion, if it's, if you're going to slap an HCQ label on it, you have to be able to trace it back to one of Dave Prada's animals. I would agree. One for, it sort has to come to like the tiger exactly. Stuff. It's got to come yeah. from the box that said high contrast Queensland. If it doesn't, right. you're just guessing and you're just throwing things at it, and that's right. stupid. So if you can, if, hey, if you want, if you start start tracing back your tiger project and you find out at one point it was crossed to an HCQ and you want to start calling things high contrast tigers, go ahead. But you know it. If you can't do it, then you can't do it. You know, I unfortunately am lucky enough that, you know, I got them direct from Prada. Right. So. Yeah, I think um, I think the cool thing, uh, I, I guess the takeaway um, for the HEQs is this. Like if you see something out there that uh, has HEQ on it, you should sort of, you know, I would question the breeder. Yep. Um, and uh, I would try to find out, you know, where that comes into play. I don't think I, I, I don't want to say that they're that they don't exist um, because there may be people out there that have them somewhere, you know, and somebody's has them in their basement somewhere and they've had them for like 12 but, years or something like that. But it's got to link this... back to a certain number of names. And that's, you know, yeah. Anthony Caponetto, Will Bird, Dave Prada, me. It's like if you right. those the, that that was pretty much it. Who was it's pretty much it? You yeah. know, working with that. So, you know, if you if you're interested in in getting an HCQ or something that was was had HCQ bred into it, understand that the the purity is what's in question. Right. So, for you to say that you have a pure coastal. And it's ACQ. It's, I think that's, that that's redundant. Misleading. <laughs> you know? So it's, it's a contradiction. You 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 can't right. say that. You can say pure right. HCQ because you that's HCQ and that's HCQ. But right. there's no pure jungle HCQ. There's no pure coastal HCQ. There's no pure jaguar HCQ. Like you you can't you can't do yeah. that when you're doing. It's better just to stay away from the word pure when associating yourself with one of these lines where. There is no count of purity. We don't know. No idea. Yeah. Right. So it's one of those things, you know, just understand. And, and also understand if somebody's, you know, trying to sell you, uh, you know, a pure coastal, quote unquote, you know, um, and you have HCQ in the background, it's sort of just like the citrus tiger. Mm-hmm. You know, citrus tigers have the two two spots where there's questionable animals. So I don't call them Coast, you know, I, I don't call them pure coastal carp. You call them I what they are, citrus tigers. Citrus tigers. <laughs> oh, right. done. But also, if say if you're building a project, say if you have 
an animal that you know for a fact is pure coastal and you want to expand on the project and do an outcrossing, picking an HCQ is a bad idea. Yeah. Because what that does is now throw your entire project into question. The better thing to do would be if you want to expand on a pure coastal project would be to track down a pure Rockhampton uh, or, yeah, probably just a pure Rockhampton. Do that because then you can expand on it. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, exactly. I've seen numerous people who have fantastic – Coastal animals, and they're like, I can't wait to breed them to this thing. Oh, it's allegedly an HCQ. It's like, eh. <laughs> no, because <laughs> now, yeah. now, now, now you've hit a brick wall. Now you've hit a dead end. Now you've injected a questionable animal into your coastal's lineage. Right, and there's not anything wrong with no, that. No, but it's just, just that understand. you want to make sure. Yeah, you know that when you're doing this and you're starting a breeding project, it really comes down to what do you want to accomplish with that. Breeding right. Project. Well, let me put it this way: if you if you're just doing it for kicks, knock yourself out. Yeah, they'll probably make fantastic babies. Right. But if you're wanting to expand on, say, a one of a kind coastal project, no. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. if if you have like, oh, I'm this thing might be genetic, not a good choice with HCQ. Right. Pick something else. Right. So yeah, and that's. Uh... The high contrast Queensland carbon. Well, promise we'll find one of these morph things that like end in a happy note. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like, and that's when we were doomed. Okay, so.